What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Darius M. Let's get straight into it. Florida Family Law Tip of the Day. Governor DeSantis did sign the alimony reform bill yesterday, so effective today. Shout out to that, man. Get these women off this grown woman child support. July 1st, permanent alimony is a thing of the past in Florida. I recently saw an article where they want to make it difficult for women to get divorced. This Good. new law means that- Good, per- y'all initiate 70 to 80% of the divorces. It should be hard. You guys getting divorced like it's the new fad. Permanent alimony has come to an end in Florida. Conservative lawmakers are trying to get rid of the no-fault divorce. And let me tell you why this is so dangerous for- Governor DeSantis just signed into law a bill that would end alimony payments for men. I recently left my husband and came out as a lesbian at the age of 27. Republican women. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God. And say they will switch parties after DeSantis approves alimony law. So a bunch of women in Florida are pissed off at Ron DeSantis because he's taking away their alimony. As he should. And this is how women have survived for so long. As he should. He should definitely take it away. There's no reason that you ladies should be able to live off the back of another man this long. This is grown people child support, buddy boy. No right, way. let's talk about the new Florida alimony law and how it may catch fire in other Republican-led states. The measure was called SB 1416, and it's a bill that not even Rick Scott, the former Republican governor, would sign. But DeSantis signed it on June 30th, and it became law on July 1st. It ends permanent alimony. Good. Now, that sounds terrible, and it is terrible for the women of Florida who were counting on having permanent alimony. Of course she would say it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. You probably aren't even into men it's mostly going to affect older women, but there are only seven states in which permanent alimony exists anyway, and those are Connecticut, New Jersey, North Carolina, Oregon, Vermont, and West Virginia. I recently saw an article where they want to make it difficult for women to get divorced. So when no-fault divorce became the norm, the suicide rate in Look at these mm-hmm. chicks. They look like witches. What? The suicide rate? Are we seriously talking about suicide rate? By 20%. 20% just based on... From no, fault to no fault. Fault to no fault. So going Wait, back... Okay. I don't even know the difference. Let's, let's educate ourselves here a little bit, chat. What is, what is fault uh, versus no fault divorce? I think I know, but I don't want to sound ignorant. A no fault divorce... Essentially means that spouses don't have to prove to the court that their marital conditions warrant the granting of a divorce. A divorce in Texas may also be granted in favor for a spouse on fault grounds. There are four distinct categories for filing a fault-based divorce in Texas. Okay, let's get into what it is in Texas. I don't know what it is in these other states. Cruelty, adultery, felony conviction, and abandonment. Abandonment? Like he never came back after going to get the milk? Is that what we're calling abandonment? I don't know. We'll see. Let's get back to it. To fault divorces does nothing but traps women and keeps them in dangerous situations. Dangerous situations. Guys, just don't get married. I mean, that's brutal. You, well, I, th- I think that marriage is still alive and well. I just think you need to learn how to vet accordingly. A lot of men don't. They have rose-colored glasses. They get lost in the sauce. Do not get lost in the sauce. Vet a good woman. Let her meet your family. We can get into that a little bit later. Giving these women leverage over you. This is an all-out assault on women. You guys see her ring finger? She's currently married. <laughs> I, I feel that's, bad. What I, that's what I'm saying. She's actually married. But a guy who she's married to. The husband, you are a fool. She's on this podcast talking about, oh, this is all-out assault on women. No. This is going to stop you guys from leeching off a man mm-hmm. and taking her money after you long gone. That's all this is about. Scamming men. Yeah, it's, it's pretty brutal. Law, a bill that would end alimony payments for men who were mandated to pay these payments for the rest of their ex-wives' lives. They called it alimony forever. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the bill into law, which now essentially does away with what is known as permanent alimony. Camille Malone Fivish says the recent change to Florida's alimony laws has her wanting to change her allegiance. Well, I'm really disappointed because I'll, I'm a Republican. 
I voted for Governor DeSantis, and this makes me very sorry that I did. Governor Ron DeSantis signed- Because we're taking the ability away from you to be able to rob other men? In the bill that does away with what's known as permanent alimony. A group known as the First Wives Advocacy Group is among those strongly against the new law, saying Shocker. it puts older women in a situation that will cause financial devastation. Co's in favor of the changes, says what permanent- What about the men? And alimony forces them to work long past the age they wanted to retire because they had to make those payments. The law also allows ex-spouses to see modifications to alimony agreements when they want to retire. It doesn't matter if there's a difference in income or uh, you are married for 20 years. If there's no need, there's gonna be no alimony. The statute was also amended to force the court to reduce or end alimony if the person getting alimony is in a supportive relationship and that does not have to be a marriage. That's a lot good. of people in there. I think. No, that's actually that, good. So if they're in an actual good relationship and they're, you know, with someone, I think that's a good idea. I think it's a really good idea. If, if, if they're in a relationship with another man, and they've moved on. I don't think that uh, you should get the alimony anymore. I get my alimony still, but it, that's not the way it works. And that was the way it was forever. The, the statute just put that in writing. New law will only line the pockets of lawyers and the already wealthy. And the rest of us, the older women here in Florida, well, we're just going to be, you know, I don't know. She's a runner. Maybe She's a track star. Government assistance. <laughs> How about get a job? For real though, bro. I know the modern dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt physically. Have you ever been the victim of a personal injury case? Every year as an image consultant, I meet so many different types of clients, and a lot of them are recovering from injuries or accidents, ranging from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was extremely surprised to see how many people lost their personal injury cases, which is why I'm here to talk about Morgan and Morgan. America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they have won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they will fight for the money you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan secured verdicts of $12 million in Florida and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is it's all free unless you win your case. If you have also been a victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi. Found in the description below where you can start your free claim today. How about stop trying to depend on men that you're not even with? Man. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, bro. Absolutely crazy. And these women are all mad about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, the consequences of my own actions. Florida just got cheaper. There no go. permanent alimony in Florida any longer. This new law means that permanent alimony... You know what? I think we should keep permanent alimony around. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Whoever makes more money should have to pay it. But most of the time, it's going to be men. So that kind of sucks. So how about we do this? If you are truly a traditional woman where you don't work, you stay at home and raise at least three kids, and you've done that for 20 plus years, I think you should qualify for it because you don't have any work history. I get that. But the thing is, is when you get, if, if the woman files for divorce, you don't get it though. So how about that? How about that? How about all those stipulations? But if you file, you don't get it. The man has to file, then you get it. But... 70 to 80% of the time, women file for divorce. And so if the man has to file, We'll give you the alimony, but men most of the time don't want to get divorced. <laughs> so that would bite them in the foot. It has come to an end in Florida. One thing supporters and opponents disagree with regarding this new law is whether it applies to existing alimony agreements. Governor Ron DeSantis signed this bill last night and the new law took effect today. Supporters say that this bill limits how long an ex-spouse would be required to make alimony payments, but supporters also say this would not apply to current agreements. However, opponents say courts could decide this new law could apply to existing alimony agreements, which puts some ex-spouses in a situation where they're unable to support themselves because they were depending on those payments. Get a job. It's always been important to allow judges to decide what is in the best interest of that family and, of course, of children, if there are children involved in the divorce. And this bill, now law, alongside others that have passed recently, um, pull that process away from the courts and into a more political realm. Republican State Representative John Snyder of Martin County, who approved the bill, says in part, quote, as society changes, we have more households where both spouses work. By eliminating permanent alimony, the bill strikes a good balance between supporting the spouse who might not earn as much income during the marriage, mm -hmm. while also encouraging self-supporting. Governor, Like I'm saying, dude, like, if, 
you're working, you shouldn't get any alimony. I know that might sound crazy, but I think the only reason you should get it is if you, you chose to raise the kids for 20 plus years, you never had a job, you were a traditional woman, you were married, like, there's so many things. But if you were just married to a guy for 20 years, y'all hate each other, hated each other for 20 years, and then you decided to divorce him and take half of his stuff and get basically grown up child support, I don't think that should be legal. Governor DeSantis of Florida signed into bill that is drastically modifying Florida's alimony statute. And as a divorce attorney, I want to talk about it. So the bill that was signed into law yesterday is SB 1416. And basically what it's doing is it's terminating Florida's ability to give permanent alimony. Permanent alimony is no longer. As of July 1st, 2023, permanent alimony was eliminated by the new law. So to give you a quick example, if a short-term marriage was six years and the court was going to award alimony, the maximum duration, the maximum length of that alimony award could only be three years. It was always cheaper to keep her. Guys. It was always cheaper to keep her. If you're out there still dating these modern women. <laughs> you well, yeah. I mean, if you're dating modern women, that's the problem. Don't date modern women. You need to date traditional women. Date for a relationship, date for marriage. Don't date for... I mean, if you just want to blow her back out, I mean... <laughs> I can't say there's anything wrong with uh, scrambling a, a woman's eggs, but uh, that's just me. <laughs> Unhappy marriages. Until now, where it's actually cheaper to leave her. It took four tries and nearly ten years, but Governor Ron DeSantis has finally signed a bill to overhaul... Florida's alimony laws and eliminate permanent. He must be about to be, be getting hit with a divorce or something. Alimony. DeSantis' approval came a year after he vetoed a similar bill and after the former Governor Rick Scott vetoed similar bills twice. Two first names. Critics argue that the bill will impoverish older ex spouses who have been homemakers and rely on alimony payments to survive. Proponents what about the, the men, though? Why are we always worried about the women? What about the men? These men have to keep working, or you're just digging out of my savings. Like, goodness. Just no, no thought about what the men are going through at all. It's always about the ladies playing the victim. This is why I say, dude... Like, don't be the villain of, or don't be the victim of your story. Be the hero of it. Like, these ladies should say, you know what? I divorced him. I need to go get a freaking job. The bill say it adds clarity and stops ex-spouses from having to continue working long past retirement because they have to keep paying alimony payments. Exactly. That's slavery, man. Imagine That's wild, bruv. I'm sorry, but I, I just I can't get behind this alimony stuff. It's grown up child support. It's robbery. Allowance per month is one thousand dollars. I feel like a peasant. If you ask me, I think my mom should be giving me at least 2,500 a month just to cover my basic expenses. When my mom refuses to give me money, I make her life a living hell. You wrote in to me. Tell me what you wanted me to get straight with your Bro, mom. Chad, let me know. If somebody was giving you $1,000 or $1, a month, would you be happy? I'd be shouting from the rooftops. I'd be like, thank you, free money, free money. I have to earn every penny I make, dude. Oh. I want my mom to understand that I can't live off of $1,000 a month and I grew up on a certain lifestyle. She can't just take that away from me immediately. If someone took her lifestyle away from her, she wouldn't like that. And I grew the up on The entitlement is crazy. This is wild, bro. I grew up on it. Well, back in my day, I grew up dirt poor. How about that? I grew up with not nothing. <laughs> Should I go back to that? That's the lifestyle I grew up on, though. <laughs> on it. It's all I ever know. I can't deal with this. And so... I can't do it for help. Okay. I think the best. She really think Doctor Phil not based enough. He's so based. He is just gonna grill you. You just start with a job. No. Yeah, absolutely. No. She needs a job. No. Are you kidding me? Look at her face. She being for real though, my dildo. This is wild, bro. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine, bro, being a grown man crying like this, bro? You would get clowned, buddy. Hey, put these chicks to work. Not a single tear. <laughs> Not a single tear. You, you need a job. No, I don't want a job. Well, I know. It's so much work. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is a lot of work. Having a job's a lot of work. No handouts, dude. No freaking handouts. Bro, chat, how old, how old were you guys when you got your first job? How old were you guys? 
I was... I was like 12. It wasn't like a big boy job or anything. Loki, does somebody want a carrot? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. Ooh, he almost dropped it. It wasn't like a big boy job or anything, but I was a um, I was a soccer referee for like under under six, under eight, and under twelve. Or I think it was under six and under eight games. Actually, I may have been fourteen at the time. I think I was fourteen. Um, but then fast forward a little bit, and then I actually started working at Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bag boy. Shout out to anybody who knows Kroger. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, what was your first job? What was your first job? My first job, I think, yeah, soccer referee, and then I worked at Kroger. But then all throughout that, I was also mowing yards. I used to mow the hell out of some lawns. A lot of people on my street, I would mow their yard. And um, sometimes I'd ask for an advance. Be like, hey, can I, can I get that up front? Some people would say, yeah, some people wouldn't. But no, I mowed yards. I never weed eated. I just mowed. But I was, I was willing to work. Point, you know, at the end of the day, I was willing to go out there and earn it. Now, did it suck? Yes. I've been in the corporate world for a decade before I I'm, before now I'm doing YouTube full time. But shout out to you guys for that. Um, I was expected to be in the corporate world, but I remember when I got out of college. I'm gonna give you guys some backstory on me. Uh, it took me six years to get an undergrad. <laughs> I'm not the smartest dude. Stupid. Um, but here's the reason why. So it's a, it was a five-year degree. I came in with no credits in college, and I went to get a music education degree. I was a percussionist. I played, I played drums, right? When I got there, they're like, hey, you can't really perform. You're not going to get a gig performing. You need to get an education degree. So I was like, okay, I guess I need to be a freaking teacher. So I went, I got my degree in music education. I got out, I taught for six months. I was, so by the time I got out, I, I did like two victory laps. A victory lap would technically be my fifth year, but I did another year because I wanted to take some elective courses. I wanted, to, I, I wanted to take philosophy. I wanted to take some other psychology courses. I wanted to take some acting courses some public speaking courses. I wanted to learn a bunch of other things in college that I didn't even get to learn. Because you know, when you go to college, you have to take a bunch of electives and things that you really don't want to take. Like I took a weight left weightlifting course because I wanted to learn how to weightlift. You know, I wanted to work with an actual trainer. So there was a lot of things that I wanted to learn that I actually had to wait to even take that class because I had to take English 105. <laughs> I had to take math, college algebra, and like I don't even use that stuff anymore, dude. I use basic, you know, multiplication and subtraction these days. That's it. I don't use anything crazy. But you remember when you remember growing up, your teacher was like, "You're never gonna have a calculator pocket, honey. I got everything in my pocket now." Shots fired! I got it all. Shots fired! Anyways, I get out of college. I'm, I'm 24 years old. I get into a teaching gig. I start teaching or whatever. And I taught for maybe six months at a, at a high school in Austin, North Austin. And I was like, bro, this is, this is not going to cut it. I was working 50, 60 hour weeks, barely making like two grand a month. It was bad because I wasn't like a, I wasn't a, um, I wasn't like a, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I was a tech. So I wasn't like a full on employee. I was like, the band had a budget to hire a tech to teach music and that was me that's what i did so i did that for six months it's like bro i'm i'm over it i'm done i'm i, I can't do this anymore then i went and got a job at a company called yodel y-o-d-l-e i don't know if any of you guys have ever even heard of this company um but it was a um basically we sold like marketing it was like a five-tier marketing platform where you would get like we would we would uh, track your web traffic. We'd give you a landing page. We'd give you you know a number that you could call. We'd provide you with analytics and you know blah blah blah. Do all this stuff. And basically, I would call small businesses. I called real estate agents, plumbers, electricians, arborists, roofers, garage door contractors. I'd call all these guys and just basically sell them on this package. It was like a forty five minute demo, and at the very end, you say fair enough, and then they they buy great. And you hit a gong. It was really cool culture. It was a really cool culture. Um, it was something that. Um, to this day, I still have some of the people that were like, like it was stuff like this. Let me, let me show you. I don't know if you can see the sales floor right here, but yeah, it had, had like a gong there and like, it was basically, you know, Wolf on Wall Street stuff. You're calling people, selling them snake oil. But, it, and then once I found out the product didn't work, I left. But either way, I got into cold calling and then got into sales and I did that for literally a decade and was able to make the bulk of my money. But if I would have stayed being a teacher, bro, I would have been broke for life. The whole point of that is, it's never too late to reinvent yourself. If you feel like what you're doing right now isn't what you really want to do, pivot. Bro, I thought I was going to be a musician. I was a failed musician in, in Austin. That's what I did. From the time I got to Austin 
from the six years I was there until I was 30, I thought I was going to be a music artist. That's what I thought. I thought I was going to be on Billboard's Hot 100. I thought I was going to be doing music videos and touring around the country. And so as soon as I, I gave myself an ultimatum, I said, hey, if the age of 30, if you're not cooking with this, you need to pivot, bro. And then I pivoted. And what did I pivot into? Content creation, doing this stuff. I started doing TikTok. I started doing Instagram. And then this last November, I was like, I'm going to conquer YouTube. And look at us now, 82,000 subs or something like that. It's absolutely insane. So it's never too late to reinvent yourself. If you feel like you're in a spot right now that you're not happy, you don't wake up fulfilled, you don't wake up every morning excited, go do something else. Start working on a side hustle. Do your nine to five, but then come home and work your side hustle from five to nine until you can supplement your income and you can quit your nine to five. That's exactly what I did. Let my story be a testament that you can do it as well. I love you guys, man. I really do. And I want you guys to achieve the things that you want to achieve. And I hope a lot of the things in the life lessons I give you, you can take and you can make something out of it. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. Makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. But I hope you guys had a good time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Loki, did you have a good time today? He's just ready to go see his mommy. He is such a mama's boy. It's unreal. Like, as soon as these are done... I open the door and he just sprints to mommy. He's such a mommy's boy. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.